A mega tsunami in the Pacific Northwest. It could be worse than predicted, according to a new study just released. Now, scientists are finding that the size of the outer wedge of a fault line can magnify a rupture's impact. This is worrying news for a fault running from Vancouver Island to Northern California. And we're talking about the Cascadia Megathrust. Scientists have long predicted a giant nine-magnitude earthquake that reverberates out from the Pacific Northwest, Cascadia Fault, and quickly triggers colossal waves barreling to shore. But what if these predictions were missing an important piece of information, one that, in certain scenarios, could tell an even more extreme story? A new study published Last month, in the peer-reviewed journal Earth Science Reviews, points to such a missing piece. Researchers reveal a previously unknown relationship between the severity of a tsunami triggered by an earthquake and something known as the outer wedge, which you're looking at here in pink. This is the area between the main earthquake fault and the seafloor. According to Sylvan Barbot, the co-author of the study, he described the outer wedge as the garbage bag of the subduction zone. The place where two tectonic plates crash into each other and can produce an earthquake. Because it's where sediment piles up. The researchers' findings suggest that the wider this wedge is, the larger the maximum size of the tsunami will be. The connection adds a new element to consider when making tsunami predictions, one that the author suggests could mean heightened worst-case scenario predictions for some faults, including Cascadia. There are places where the outer wedge is tiny, so that's great news, said Barrett, an associate professor in earth science at University of Southern California, and there are places where this wedge is huge. And that is the case in the Pacific Northwest. For about two years, he and co-author Quang Kui of the South China Sea Institute of Oceanography studied 11 tsunami earthquakes that have taken place across the world over the past 200 years. And these rare events involve less powerful earthquakes. The authors looked at those measuring from 7.1 to 8.2 magnitude that produce huge tsunamis and have long puzzled scientists. And what they found was a correl correlative relationship between the maximum tsunami height and the outer wedge. The wider this wedge is, Barbo explained, the more faults there are and the more chances there are to move the seafloor, and thus, the more extreme the tsunami will be. Imagine a bookshelf full of books. And you take the books and you tilt them at 45 degrees. The interface between any book is a fault. And so, in an outer wedge, you have all of these books and all of these faults in between. And then they can provide a pathway for the rupture to go up instead of going left, he explained. From there, they used these findings to make tsunami predictions about dozens of other active subduction zones around the Ring of Fire, a nearly 25,000-mile path where most of the earthquakes, the large world's earthquakes, occur. And towards the top of that list was the 600-mile Cascadia subduction zone the Cascadia Megathrust Fault. It runs from Vancouver Island, Canada, down to Northern California, and it's poised for its next large earthquake. The last big earthquake on the Cascadia Fault Zone, the last big one, was back in 1700, which is this red line here. And as you can see where we are here, 
is one of the largest gaps in history except for these back in antiquity. So there's a very high chance that the Cascadia Fault will rupture very soon. Very soon. Current estimates point to about a 15 chance of a 9 magnitude earthquake in just the next five decades. That would be empire ending. Now a 2015 Pulitzer Prize winning New Yorker article brought widespread attention to the subduction zone. And the article described the next full-scale quake as the worst natural disaster in the history of North America. That's outside of the Haiti 2010 quake. Now the site, according to the authors, has a fairly large outer wedge running between 15 and 43 kilometers. And according to their research, that suggests that a tsunami triggered by a 9-magnitude earthquake could reach higher than the 200 feet, or 61 meters, proposed. Although there's a range of predictions for the big one, that's roughly twice as high as some of the most severe previously considered scenarios. And when compared to the 30 other subduction zones analyzed by the study's authors, Cascadia was ranked fifth in terms of tsunami severity. It is only behind such subduction zones at the Makran in Pakistan and Iran, the Aleutian in Alaska, the Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean, according to the authors. Barbeau further explained that these findings need to be further validated, but they could ultimately lead not only to changes in tsunami predictions, but also to emergency preparedness in these regions. If you prepare for a 30-meter tsunami and a 60-meter one comes in, you basically need to double the height of your evacuation zones. You need to change where you plan to build the infrastructure like hospitals, schools. It changes also in a more practical sense, basically the price of insurance for real estate. It changes the risk, essentially, and how it's spatially distributed. But of course, this outer wedge is not the only variable that can influence the size of a tsunami. There are many other factors that come into play, including the slope of the seafloor, and the overall topography. Harold Tobin, director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and professor of Earth and Space Sciences at the University of Washington, cautioned that while this study reveals an interesting new finding, further research is certainly needed to fully factor in these variables. He explained that it would be premature to jump to any conclusions or start modifying how the Pacific Northwest or other areas prepare for tsunamis. What we need to do is factor in the evidence that this paper has given to us to better build a model for all of that, to refine and improve the scenarios that are being prepared for. But all by itself, it doesn't mean that we need to suddenly say, okay, there's double the tsunami hazard before. It just points to one possible mechanism that could mean that the next tsunami or that the tsunami hazard in the Cascadia region could be much greater than previously thought. And we'll leave you links to all of the data and all of the papers. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance when new data suggests that the outer wedge well, could possibly result in double the tsunami size. That's absolutely catastrophic. And the Pacific. And this particular model 
is the one that they said needs to be adjusted to twice the scale, especially for the Pacific Northwest. And that's frightening, as well as enlightening. Now, we're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. So take this information as a precursor to the heed, the warning that we've been warning you about for six years now. Be prepared, not scared. And if you can, get out of that region. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, and the heroes that share this video. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom.